This is the original MacBook Air, the generation that came out in 2008. And it sucks. It's, it's terrible. This thing was bad then, and it's bad now. But what I wanna find out today is, can you still use a 13-year-old MacBook Air in 2021? Back in 2008, the original MacBook Air was basically the first ultralight laptop, and it was really intended to work on the go as an internet machine. And if you're going to use it in 2021, you're probably going to want to improve your internet security with today's video sponsor, Dashlane. The desktop and mobile app designed to make the annoying and risky parts of your digital life easier and safer. Dashlane includes a password manager, autofill for personal information and payment details, breach alerts for compromised accounts, dark web monitoring, and even a VPN with country selection. Dashlane saves and autofills credit card information, so you can check out online in just one click without having to go find your wallet. Plus, it works across all devices and platforms, so you don't need to worry about having a password saved on an individual device. I used to use iCloud Keychain for saving all my passwords, but I'll be honest, Dashlane is easier to use and I think more effective. I can't tell you how many times iCloud has somehow managed to save the wrong password. Like, how does it even do that? I can't recommend Dashlane enough. It has saved me a ton of time in my daily life. If all that sounds good to you, you can try Dashlane for free on your first device by going to dashlane.com slash Miani. And if you decide to upgrade to premium, use my code Miani for 10% off. This MacBook Air reminds me of a famous phrase used in Top Gear, one of my favorite shows of all time. Ambitious, but rubbish. That's, that's basically what this thing was. Apple tried to do a lot with the original MacBook Air. It was the world's thinnest notebook by a pretty decent amount when it came out. I mean, look at this thing. This is a 13-year-old laptop. It might not look like anything particularly thin by today's standards, but for 2008, this thing was insane. However, they had to do so many compromises to make this device possible that it begs the question, was it all worth it? No, it, it wasn't, okay? I mean, normally I would go through and explore the pros and cons, but I just, right off the bat, <laughs> it sucked. It sucked then, it sucks now. It's almost hilarious, and it's so much so that we have to go through and talk about what was such a failure about this computer. The first thing that was so bad about this was the same thing that made it revolutionary, the design. Now, by today's standards and in the context of all the MacBooks that have come after it, it looks very similar to the unibody MacBook design language. However, this was actually what set the trend. This was the first laptop that had the iconic black key chiclet style keyboard. This is where it started. However, to get to that point and to get to such a thin and light device, they made a lot of compromises. The big sacrifice was the ports. They basically had to get rid of them all. This is all you get. Look at that, a USB, a mini display port, and a headphone jack. And keep in mind, this laptop was made in 2008 when people wanted like DVD drives, compact flash card, SD card, like six USB ports. You wanted S-Video, display port, mini display port, component, like there were so many of these video outputs that people wanted, and this is all you got. And it wasn't just the design that sucked, it was everything that Apple had to gut from what makes a Mac a Mac to fit it in a design this thin. Because it was so thin, they couldn't fit a normal two and a half inch drive. So do you know where they got the hard drives from? That's right, you guessed it, the iPod Classic. So it was a 4200 RPM, 80 gigabyte hard drive, and it was slow as right from the start, but don't worry because Apple would allow you to upgrade to a 64 gigabyte SSD for <clears throat> $1,000. It cost $1,000 to upgrade to a 64 gigabyte SSD. Now granted, this is 2008 we're talking about. SSDs were expensive. I remember five years later buying a 120 gigabyte SSD for $120. So they used to be very expensive, but a thousand bucks for 60 gigs? Oh my God. 
Oh yeah, and did I mention that the MacBook Air started at $1,800? So if you wanted to get one and upgrade it so that it wasn't slow as crap right out of the box, that would cost you, in today's dollars, $3,411. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the CPU is cooled by what resembles the look and functionality of a piece of aluminum foil. So naturally this thing throttles down to the Earth's core when you try to do anything on it, to the point that it will actually disable one of the cores to keep cool. So you basically spent 3,500 bucks on an iPod with a furnace in it. Now, I have a confession to make. This isn't actually the first early 2008 MacBook Air. This one is the late 2008 MacBook Air, which came out very rushed and was basically designed to address some of those pretty terrible problems. They made the SSDs a little bit less price gougy. They gave it a slightly improved Core 2 Duo that didn't thermal throttle as much, although it did still throttle. They also beefed up the heatsink by pulling what looks like a piece of a Campbell soup can. It's not very much more effective, and this thing gets ridiculously hot doing pretty much nothing at all. But importantly, they gave this thing the NVIDIA GeForce 9400M GT graphics that they stole straight out of the MacBook Pro. And that's significant because it means, as you can probably see, that you can run macOS Catalina on a late 2008 MacBook Air. So given those minor tweaks, and the fact that this is using an almost current operating system, can you actually use the original MacBook Air in 2021? Kind of. Like, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, given how absolutely terrible the initial version of this thing was and how minor of an upgrade this late 2008 is over that. I'm honestly kind of surprised that you know, the animations are a little choppy, but they work. You can watch YouTube on this thing. I even watched YouTube in 1080p and I had to give it a little bit of time, but it, it did work. The biggest thing is you can't realistically have multiple applications open on this computer because it only has two gigabytes of RAM and it's soldered to the logic board, so you can't upgrade it. You couldn't even get this thing with four gigs. That's it, it's two. In terms of usability, the screen is actually not the worst thing I've ever used. It's a 1280 by 800 panel, similar to what you would find in 13 inch unibody MacBooks, but this one's actually a little bit worse because they had to like make it super thin, so it's not as bright and it's not as high quality as what you would find in a unibody MacBook Pro, but you know, it's passable. Uh, the keyboard is really good. It's almost exactly the same as what you would find on a unibody MacBook Pro. The one thing that's definitely not as good as literally any later MacBook is obviously the trackpad. It might have the multi-touch gestures, but it's still a plastic trackpad surface, and we still have that like single click button down here, which means you gotta, you know, control click to do right click, and the, the tracking isn't anywhere near as good as the later glass trackpads, but it'll do the job. But it is almost impressive how slow this thing is. I mean, mine, which has an SSD, mercifully, is actually okay at navigating the operating system, but if, if you get one of these that has the 80 gigabyte iPod hard drive, forget about it. You're not gonna be able to do anything on it. It's, it's just painfully slow, and the heat output is, is, is a little bit ridiculous. I mean, I've just had it literally on the desktop for this video, and it's pretty warm on my hand. If you try to watch a YouTube video, the fan gets going pretty loud, and it does somewhat ruin the experience, and certainly the audio, which comes out of the mono single channel speaker that's like right over here, it sounds really bad. <laughs> also, the battery life is not, is not good. It definitely hasn't held up. This is the original battery in this computer, and it only has 30 cycles, so it's in very good shape. However, since I started recording, I've gone down from about 90% to 66, and it's only been about 20 minutes, and I'm just sitting on the desktop. So yeah, it's not very fast, and the battery doesn't last very long, and in fact, just for fun, I, I gave it a whirl in Geekbench 5 just to see how slow it was, and well, take a look, I mean, I mean, what do you expect? Obviously, I compared it to newer computers, so it's a bit laughable, but 
I'll be honest, folks, it's been a while since I've seen a triple digit Geekbench 5 score, 389. <laughs> it's terrible. But then again, what exactly are you expecting with a computer like this? It's 13 years old and it was, essentially it was a public beta test. That's the best way I could describe it. It was saying, hey, look at this, we can build a computer that's super thin and it's 2008 and that's pretty cool. But don't worry about the fact that it has like an iPod hard drive and it's prohibitively expensive and it's gonna break and the hinges wear out after like a year and now they're all loose like this. Yeah, there's a lot that's wrong with this computer. So in terms of using this in 2021, I would not recommend it. I mean, you can make do, but also you don't really have to because this isn't a computer that you're realistically gonna go out and buy. Like I went on eBay to get an idea of how much these things cost and I couldn't really find one in good working condition. And the ones that I did find weren't very cheap, certainly no cheaper than like the venerable mid-2010 13-inch MacBook Pro, which has an upgradable hard drive and upgradable RAM and tons of parts and is much more reliable and doesn't thermal throttle and it's twice as powerful and has better battery life and a better trackpad. So like, just buy that. These I think are more collector's items at this point than usable laptops. From what I can see on eBay based on supply, they're actually quite rare. I'm probably gonna downgrade it back to Snow Leopard and use it as kind of like a time capsule because I think it's a really cool product. I mean, you can't tell me that if you weren't alive and sentient in 2008, you don't remember the famous Manila Envelope ad. That thing, that's a classic. It's up there with the I'm a Mac, I'm a PC ads in terms of just being iconic. And this device itself is iconic. This was the first Ultrabook, really. So for that reason, no, you're not gonna use this in 2021, but I'm absolutely going to keep this thing because as bad as it was, it's, it's a really interesting, bad product. And so that's why I'm gonna keep this one. And that's also why you should subscribe to the channel if you wanna watch more interesting videos about interesting things. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter, leave a like down below. Let me know what you think about the original first generation MacBook Air. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.